Hi everybody, it's the 20th of June and you've tuned into TNT. Thank you very much for dropping in. Uh, we'll try and take you around some of the main news stories around Thailand today as we do Monday to Friday. As I mentioned the oh, I mentioned yesterday, off away next week, hoping still to do the program every day. I've got uh, obligations, so it's a bit of a working holiday, but I will be overseas. Appreciate uh, all the guesses as to where I'm going. One person's got it right. Probably mention more about that on Saturday on the live program. But to uh, to this story, and we head to Rayong, Thai PBS World, saying that there was a large blaze at an electronics firm in Rayong. Look at that blaze! My goodness, the black smoke. A huge fire broke out at an electronic parts company in Rayong's Pluak Dang district yesterday afternoon. And the blaze at the factory of Sun In Electronics started at around 1 p.m. and sent large columns of black smoke billowing into the air. And the Ban Klong Kram School, about three kilometres from the factory, sent their students home. And they also advised people in the area to wear face masks. And at the press time, which would have been late yesterday afternoon, firefighters using water trucks had brought the fire under control. So uh, despite a lot of smoke, looks like there was no one injured uh, in that fire in Rayong yesterday. OK, heading to the Bangkok Post now. And the report extended alcohol sales hours ruled out for now. So there are two aspects to this story. There's the extension of the uh, the closing times for uh, for bars, gone from 12 to 2 to 4 a.m. in the morning. And then the other one is the a ban on alcohol sales between 2 and 5 each afternoon for some reason. But the story says the public health minister says the ministry's Alcoholic Beverage Control Committee took into consideration statistics about road accidents and related legal aspects. While the committee does not support extended hours, the issues not come to an end because five draft laws related to alcohol beverages await scrutiny in Parliament. Currently, sale of alcohol beverages are allowed in stores between 11 and 2 and between 5 p.m. and midnight, or that's 10 hours a day. Bars, restaurants and nightclubs can sell alcoholic drinks at the hours approved in the jurisdiction where they operate. And the Disease Control Department chief said the panel was briefed about a pilot project in which alcohol sales were extended by two hours in five key tourist destinations. That's Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Chombri, Phuket and Koh Samui. And the extension, which took effect last December the 15th, was related to the idea of allowing about 1,800 entertainment venues to stay open until 4 a.m. However, a survey showing a significant rise in road accidents and deaths especially between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. It's not yet been decided whether to consider extending hours for night spots in other areas. Apparently, the number of deaths in road accidents in the pilot areas uh, in January increased by 31%. That's a lot compared with the same period last year. And that's uh, from information from the Thai Road Safety Centre operated by the Road Accident Victims Protection Company. So I suppose the bottom line on this is there's unlikely to be any change in the places that are already operating extended closing times. But uh, certainly that ban on alcohol sales during the day looks like it uh, will probably remain that way. Well, hoping that the weather is OK wherever you are. I noticed in Bangkok over the last few days, there has certainly been some flooding uh, down this part of the world in the south of Thailand. We've had a bit of rain, but not a lot. But there was also a story uh, last week. I haven't really done much about it, but uh, three boats which were carrying oil were stolen from Satahip, which is just south of Pattaya. And they eventually found them in Malaysia. But it seems they've sort of got to the bottom of what was going on. And NationThailand.com's reporting police identify fuel smuggling mastermind after boats recaptured. And police say they've identified the mastermind of a fuel smuggling operation after three modified fishing boats that escaped with four to five million baht in diesel were recaptured on Monday. The captain of one boat hid a GPS navigation device under his bunk and used it to lead the other boats out of police detention in Satahip Chombri. The boats unloaded the contraband fuel in Cambodia. Now, the captain then received an order via mobile phone from the Patani-based boat owner to return to Patani. 
which is right down there in the deep south of Thailand. There's a lot of other bits and pieces of details, but I'm just trying to get to the, uh, the main parts of the story. And they were recaptured in Malaysian waters last Sunday with the tanks almost empty and just enough fuel to make it back to port. And the captain confessed that the diesel was unloaded in Cambodia along with seven Cambodian crew members. Uh, police have detained the recaptured crewmen and are seeking the seven missing Cambodians. And the skipper said the boats were recaptured when one suffered engine failure and the other boat stopped to wait for its repair. Damn those repairs. And the CIB will investigate whether Satahip Marine Police helped the three boats escape. And other publications going even heavier on the alleged police involvement in that particular story. Now, another story that's sort of been flying under the radar, but, well, suddenly it looks like Thailand might be getting some sort of casino. And again to nationthailand.com, final draft of casino entertainment complex bill to be ready in four weeks. And the Deputy Finance Minister said on Wednesday that the final draft of the bill to allow the opening in Thailand of large entertainment complexes with casinos would be ready for deliberations by the Cabinet in three or four weeks. The way this story is evolving is every time they report it, the word casino is couched in a broader term of large entertainment complexes. So a sort of casinos by stealth. And Jula Pun said 16 government agencies had submitted their views to allow large entertainment complexes with casinos. On the economic impact, Jula Pun said uh, all the 16 agencies agreed that such entertainment complexes could boost Thailand's economy. But on the social impact, several agencies proposed mechanisms for protecting members of the society from the effects of gambling. He said the entertainment complex project would bring about 30 billion to 50 billion baht in investments into the country. The casinos would attract 30 to 50 billion baht in investment. He added that the casinos would take up no more than 5% of space in each comprehensive entertainment complex that would also include hotels and other entertainment facilities. 20-storey hotel, bottom floor is all a casino, job done. So it looks like uh, one way or the other, with all this emphasis on getting money into the country at the moment, looks like Thailand might end up with a casino at long last. Okay, heading to the very underused Utupau Airport. Perhaps some good news for them. And this is from thepatianews.com. TAT welcomes new flights by SCAT Airlines and AirAsia at Utupau Airport. More about SCAT later. And the TAT, together with the Utupau Rayong Pattaya International Airport, I'm sure it's always going to be called Utupau, is pleased to welcome new flight connections by SCAT Airlines from Almaty in Kazakhstan and AirAsia from KL. And those first two planes arrived at Utupau uh, on the 17th of June. The TAT and the airport are integrating strategies to attract new international flights from key tourist markets, including India, Vietnam, China, Russia and Kazakhstan, as well as domestic flights. And airlines are offered incentives on landing and parking fees. So Utapau has been a very quiet enterprise since the pandemic. And it looks like that they're rolling out incentives to try and encourage airlines to actually fly there. And SCAT Airlines is scheduled to operate one charter flight on the route every 7 to 10 days uh, up till March next year, using its 213-seat Boeing 797 MAX 9. Mm. Well, there's no such thing as a Boeing 797. I'm pretty sure Boeing wish there was. That's a Boeing 737. That's one of those MAX aircraft that I will never fly on. And then it says uh, this marked its second charter service between Kazakhstan and Thailand following its recently launched Almaty Suratani flight. So, well, I thought I'd jump on, check the new SCAT Airlines uh, website. Didn't really know what I'd see, but uh, I tried to look for flights from Utupau to Kazakhstan, from Suratani to Kazakhstan. Nothing. Uh, it wouldn't even register the words Suratani or Utapau in many, many different iterations that I tried. So I'm not exactly sure who's booking these flights. And just a bit of information about SCAT Airlines, which stands for Special Cargo Air Transport. This is from tripsavvy.com. And they say, unfortunately, SCAT's air record is just as smelly as what you think of when you first hear its name. 
but not because of how many fatal crashes it suffered, just one since it began operations in 1997. And then it takes talent to become one of the world's most dangerous airlines in just over two decades. Rather, the European Commission's decision to blacklist SCAT stems from an overall lack of confidence in its regulatory processes, which are spilled over to other Kazakh airlines. And then if your travel plans take you to Kazakhstan, you might want to choose less unsafe airlines such as Air Astana. The story also reported in markets.businessinsider.com, AirAsia reconnects KL to Thailand's beach city of Pattaya. Though you've got about a 45-minute drive, uh, AirAsia today celebrated its service resumption from KL to Pattaya, Thailand's eighth largest city, famed for its beautiful beaches, water sports activities and entertainment venues. Water sports, you say? Okay, let's check out those beautiful beaches. And the PattayaNews.com reporting, Na Jomtiem Municipality warns tourists of dangerous slope due to beach erosion. The story says a large section of the beach, around 1,000 metres, that's a kilometre, has been severely eroded by monsoon waves and strong winds, creating a steep slope as high as 1.5 to 2 metres, and the eroded area poses a safety hazard to both locals and tourists due to the uneven sand. Authorities stress that tourists should avoid the area, especially at night when visibility is limited. So Patia over the years has done a great job to reconstruct beaches, well, actually make them much bigger than they ever were. The problem is when you artificially add sand to a beach, you just need one good storm and it washes all that good work away. That nature will always win. Are they going to spend the billions of baht again to replace all that sand that's been washed away? I mean, Na Jom Tien suddenly looked great with those great big long wide beaches, but now it's, uh, well, about a kilometre of the beach is not able to be used. Okay, to this story, China's rich ditch flashy luxury as global sales stall, says Bain. Um, not really going to do the story, I just liked the headline. But hopefully you're a bit more up to date with things happening around Thailand. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. A big thanks to our sponsor, Five Star Marine, at fivestarmarinephuket.com, and also Beach House Thailand. There are links in the description below if you'd like to find out more information about either of our sponsors. In the meantime, have a fantastic Thursday. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow.